So thanks for those of you that already went and watched the Twitter No Boundaries Q&A. Here is the Facebook followers version, and I hope you guys enjoy this one too. Let's hope these questions are good. We'll see though. All right, and I'm not going to be able to answer every single one of them. I apologize, but you know, when you get that many questions, think about how long the video would be if I answered every single one of them. And some of them are repetitive and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and get started, though. Michael Corvin asked, could you elaborate more on your stance on people who commit suicide being selfish and taking the easy way out? And this is in reference to, to make sure everybody has the proper context if you're not familiar, Jim Cornette said something to the effect of fuck Kurt Cobain, that he took the easy coward's way out. And I agreed with him. And I do agree with him. And here's the reason why. Is for all the people who want to talk about depression and how serious of an issue it is, let's face it, a lot of people get emotional about shit. And it's similar to bipolar disorder. Like people are moody and emotional and have violent mood swings. What happens is is because of the system that we have in our country, in particular, created by big pharma and the insurance companies, we create a dependency system, and therefore we look for reasons to be able to diagnose somebody with something so that way we can get them hooked on prescription drugs, which unfortunately in a lot of places is now translated into opiate addictions. Far too many people are diagnosed with depression, and they're not depressed. I don't care what anybody says. That's just the way it is. That's, that's the medical system over diagnosing people so that way they can prescribe out pills. Believe me or not, I don't give a fuck, but it is what it is. But ultimately, especially in Kurt Cobain's case, you had a wife and there was a child and he didn't give a fuck enough about them to try and battle his demons. And don't tell me he battled his demons. Clearly he fucking didn't try hard enough because he ultimately took his own life. He did something incredibly cowardly because instead of facing the demons and trying to overcome them and really trying to overcome them, he took the punk-ass coward's way out and ended his life. The act itself is not necessarily punk-ass and cowardly because it takes a lot of courage in that moment to take your own life. But ultimately, it was a cowardly thing to do because now you've got a wife and a kid that are left by the wayside. Now that family's got to try and pick up the fucking pieces because you didn't give a fuck enough about them to try and get yourself some real help and or just get the fuck over yourself and dust yourself off. And I speak from my own personal experience as a kid, man, especially as a smaller kid, I was brutalized. Like kids used to think it was fun to just randomly come up and start hitting me. And then 15 minutes later, they would ask me to help them do their homework. Or in that case, they would just tell me to do their homework. And of course, because I'm 10 inches smaller than everybody else at the time, I was like, oh, okay. And then after school, they would usually beat me up. Like, they used to trip me from behind, be in the fucking bathroom stall, you know, at the urinal. And people would hit me in the fucking back and smack me upside the head. And I, how you think how I am now, I am what I am. But 20, 30 years ago... I was nowhere near the same type of individual. I promise you that. If anything, it's those experiences as a small and young kid, even throughout my teenage years, middle school and high school, that created kind of the shell of the personality in the person that I am today. So I used to be depressed all the fucking time. I just thought everybody hated me, uh, that nobody liked me, thought maybe the world would be better off without me, maybe I'd be better off without the world. But you know what? I kept going. And eventually, at some point in time, and believe me, I used to sit there at night almost all the time and think about how miserable my fucking life was. Because my mom wasn't fucking working, so we didn't have any fucking money. Think about if you have a bedroom that's like 10 foot by 13 foot. Now imagine sharing that with your mother for six years. That was where we lived. Eating ramen noodles and buddy lunch meat and sometimes nothing at all. Um... Wearing shitty clothes and all this other crap. The point I'm getting at here is I had a tough life at times, especially as a kid. And sometimes as an adult too. And there have been times where you think about different things. But personally, I can never bring myself to that point. Because one, I think about some of the other people that I would leave in the wake and they'd have to pick up the pieces... Even though if I was selfish enough to take my own life, you know what they should say? 
fuck him. If he didn't care about me, I don't care about him. And that's exactly what the fuck they should think. Similar to how Kurt Cobain's family, friends, and loved ones should think about him. He didn't think enough about himself to think enough about you to stop himself from killing himself. Then fuck him. Screw him. You don't need him. I'm sorry. And yes, it's speaking from my own experience. I didn't do it ultimately. So I don't see why other people have to. And you can give me all this hullabaloo bullshit where people can about this and that and everything else. It is ultimately a punk ass, selfish, coward thing to do. And I don't back down from that. Boston Kennedy, what podcast host or YWC host would you like to do a show with? Um, podcasters, guys like Don Tony and T Kevin Castle, Solomonster, Good Mike were so many others that never fucking asked me to do anything with them. Uh, in terms of YWC people, anyone really, honestly, that has a bigger following than me. But again, of course, none of them ever asked me to do anything. So, open season, any of them. And even people with smaller followings, because there still could be people there from a selfish standpoint that might not be that exposed to me or might not know much about me or might have misconceptions, misperceptions about me and what the channel's about and what I'm about and what I represent. And I find that throughout the comments at times. You know, some of the wise asses that think they really know and they really, really don't. So, yeah, be open to do with just about anybody, honestly. Uh, Kyle Garner, someone looking into purchasing his first home, do you recommend renting first or owning a smaller home? I think you said you were like 24 and I think you said you were in Indiana somewhere like Newcastle or something. Um, do your research in terms of the housing market. Look at... Uh, how the market's kind of trended in your area over the past three to five years. See if you feel like the value of the houses is kind of out of whack. And if it's kind of out of whack, then wait. Wait for the market to plummet. And then, because it is going to, the bubble's going to burst again because we're too stupid to learn from our past mistakes. The mortgage bubble will burst, the auto industry bubble will burst, and we'll be back in the same shit again pretty soon that we were a decade ago. So if you can... And I feel like that's within two to three years that's going to happen. And no, that's not just because of Donald Trump. Not by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, it'll have very little, if anything, to do with him. Real talk. But wait until then. Wait for those housing prices to plummet because all of a sudden so many people are getting foreclosed on. So many people are getting out of their houses. Um, and you can get yourself a steal on the short sale market, you know, buying a foreclosure or something. So I would try and wait because I feel like, and I could be completely ass wrong, but I feel like in the next two to three years, if not sooner, you'll probably see a significant dip in the housing market. And that could tie into Wall Street. And if Wall Street doesn't get the type of uh, tax cuts for the upper class that they're anticipating, which is what's led to a massive bubble in the value of the stock market here since Trump was elected, that market's going to crash and then eventually it's going to trickle over into the mortgage industry. Now, for you being where you're at in the Midwest, in a smaller town, maybe there's not as much of an impact. Ultimately, you got to look at it and see, you know, are you really ready to own a home? What happens if you buy a house now and then the market does crash and then two years later, you have $50,000 of negative equity. You're incredibly upside down and it might take you 15 years to get back right side up. So think about all those things. Um, do you have any money to put down? So all that stuff. If you have any more questions, hit me up on Facebook. Uh, Shay Delane, why do you not get to see your kid and why did you move to Virginia? Why do, would any man move halfway across the country to a place that he has no roots? It's either one or two things. It's money or pussy. Period. Anybody else tells you anything differently? Well, you need to change the scene. Bullshit. It's either money or pussy. I was ready to get out of Iowa, and the pussy was here. So guess where the schlick daddy went? As far as why I don't get to see my kid, I think I asked, answered this in the last uh, Facebook Q&A. So go back and reference that one and watch that one. And I do want to clear up one thing for those that say, it's some of my fault too. There's no question. I mean, there are things I could have done differently and better. Uh, but again, at some point in time, if the other party is never going to cooperate, and frankly the system doesn't care, 
there's only so much you can do. And especially being out here now in Virginia, it's pretty hard to make that happen on a consistent basis. Even though when I was still in Illinois or in Iowa, it didn't make a damn bit of difference, I'm just saying. Uh, Stephen Bradley, my ex broke up with me. I grew some balls and bought her some stuff and she loved it. Uh, Stephen, uh, Stephen. Buying a bitch stuff is not growing some balls. That means she still has her your balls in her purse, number one. Obviously, she wants it, clearly, but keeps testing me. She tried to be friends first, but I stood my ground. Uh, sounds like you didn't. I'll give her the space to think about it. What should I do? Okay. Now, Stephen, if I'm not mistaken, you're probably somewhere in the... What are you like in the 21 to 24 or 25 age range? Maybe about 22, 23 years of age. So this is probably a woman that's somewhere between 18 and 22, 23. So she's hit you with that phase. I need to think. I need some space. It's all about me and all that other fucking bullshit. You have fucked up on so many different levels here, let me tell you. And I speak from my own personal experience. And a lot of other dudes in the comment section can speak to the same type of experience. Once that bitch hits you. And because she's saying shit like this, I'm going to call her a bitch. Because that's what she is. That's some screwy headed bitch shit. She's trying to mind fuck you and play games. Because, oh my god, it's so glorious. I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. I just want to focus on me. I need space. I need time to breathe. No, you don't, bitch. Take this dick in your mouth. No. What it really is, is that... She really doesn't think that highly of you, but doesn't have the courage to tell you to fuck off. And that's typically what it is. Or she's got something else lined up and wants to see how that plays out. So you are what is called option number two, buddy. And that is also possible. Or option three, the bitch is just nuts and it's always going to be an issue or a problem with her. And she's just going through that phase that most all women do between the ages of 17 to 22 or 23. And they do. Um, and that could be it too. You give her the space to think about it. That's your problem. I'm going to tell you right now. Why are you giving her all the trump cards, so to speak? Why are you giving her all the power, Stephen? Piznik 64. Nut up. Man the fuck up. I'm telling you right now, because all you're doing is if she sits there and has the space and time to think about it, and she decides that you're worthy enough for her, you are always going to be at a competitive disadvantage. You will never fucking win, and it'll eventually go south anyways. So here's what you need to do. Number one, ignore the fucking bitch. Number two... Go find yourself a new piece, or at least create the illusion that there is a new, new piece. And number three, make sure somehow, some way, directly or indirectly, that I need my space bitch knows about it. As I promise you, one of two things is going to happen. And it always plays out this way. Either this heifer is going to be your new heifer, and you forget all about the other heifer, and life goes on, or this heifer, the original heifer, who now all of a sudden wanted space and time to breathe and think because women are competitive and really cutthroat of that nature. She didn't want anything to do with you. Didn't value that much because there was no threat of you going anywhere. Now that there's a threat of you going somewhere, oh my God, I can't let that happen. He's mine, damn it. And then you've got the competitive fucking advantage. Then you come out the winner no matter what. Either she comes sniveling back or you got yourself a new piece. It's not easy. And I'm not going to pretend like it's easy. But you can continue going down your path to where you're spending money and you're worrying about shit when she's not devoting nearly that much time to you. I promise you, when you talk, you have a woman say she needs space or time to think, she needs space and she ain't thinking about you because she wants space to not think about you because she has something else going on. I promise you. Put money on it. So nut up, man up, find something else. And either you'll get what you really want, which is the first one, or you'll find something else which you wanted even more. Don't give her the control, because that's exactly what you're doing right now. And all it's costing you, right, all it's doing to you right now is costing you dollars and headaches. Give her the fucking headaches. Mm -hmm.
Stupid things us men do. You'll learn, Pisnik. You'll learn. Antoine Dupree, which is worse, systemic racism we can see everywhere or the victim mentality that everybody is discriminated against, particularly from the millennial generation? Uh, it probably goes hand in hand. Um, there is systemic racism. And that's not some social justice warrior bullshit. That's not some fucking cuck bullshit. It is. It's there. Let's own up to it. It is there. It is obvious to see. But there is a significant problem as well, equally, in terms of victim mentality. Because even if there is systemic racism, it doesn't mean that you can't succeed within that system. And there are examples of people through all walks of life that are able to do so. Except as black WWE champions. Um, but that victim mentality of nobody will hire me because of this or that. No, maybe nobody will hire you because you have these fucking big ass holes in your goddamn ears. You have tattoos on your damn head. You have your pants sagging down past your ass crack. And all these different things that I used to see as a hiring manager for years. Had nothing to do with anything other than the fact you look like a fucking slob who didn't give a shit about themselves, so why would I think he would give a shit about the job? Why in the hell would I give you a chance? First impressions are everything, and they really are. It's a superficial world we live in, sorry to say it. So a lot of times the victim mentality comes in, we want to blame everybody else because the toughest thing to do is criticize ourselves and own up to our own mistakes. I used to be the same way. Now I look within first, then blame others. I have to make sure I handle my own business right. And so often I see the people that talk about being the victim. And I still see this at, at my job now. People complain about why they're in the same position they are for 15, 20 years. Did you ever think it's because you literally whine, bitch, and moan, piss, and complain about every fucking little change and every little fucking thing? Why in the hell would anybody ever want you in charge of a team of your own? You can't run your own shit right. You can't manage your own behaviors, your own personality. You can't babysit yourself. Why the hell would I have you babysit anybody else? So I say it's a 50-50 split, honestly. Flavi, let's try that again. Flavi and Johnny. I know you were laughing because you didn't want me to pronounce it, but you said give it my best American shot. Well, there you go. Fucking go. Flavi and Johnny. Uh, choose one of these two hashtags. Hashtag make Charlotte less sloppy again or hashtag make Ambrose wash his ass again. Uh, I find it funny, when has Charlotte ever not been sloppy? And also, when has Ambrose ever actually washed his ass? For the nasal cavities of everybody in attendance at Raw, I will side with hashtag make Ambrose wash his ass again. I'm just saying. David Dye. How would Mello coexist with CP3 and Harden if he goes to the Rockets? I don't think well. well what the fuck is Mello going to do? He's a ball vacuum that plays no defense. Good luck with that. Let me know how that goes. I think it would be a disaster. David Bentz, if you had one night with your favorite porn star with no consequences, would you rather have her swallow or give her a cream pie? Nut in her mouth or nut in the cooch with no consequences? I gotta go cooch all day long. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you? Like Jada Fire, if there are no consequences to anything, I'm busting all up inside that bitch's pussy. I'm going to ruin her porn career. We're going to make us some fucking Barack Obamas. I'm just saying. Just saying. Oh, yeah, so cream pie all day long, David. Cream pie all day long. Um, Mark Whalen, fuck, Mary kill. Eva Marie, Serena Williams, Stephanie McMahon. Well, I think we know the Mary is Serena Williams. The fuck is probably got to be Stephanie McMahon because she comes from money. And ultimately, I can go where God has gone before and then kill Eva Marie. And no, no, thank you. <laughs> so, so, fuck Stephanie McMahon, marry Serena Williams, kill Eva Marie. Because if I give it to Stephanie one time, I might give her a son. No, I'll give her another fucking daughter. Fuck my life. David Garcia, why do you think so many Trumpers are so retarded thinking he will make America great again? I don't know if we need to necessarily go with retarded, but kind of foolish. I mean, how could you not see the dude was a snake oil salesman? I mean, there's just so many things that I've talked about in the past. But I, I do think complaining about every single thing that Trump does is also counterproductive. I think you need to pick and choose your spots because you bitch and complain about him enough. 
it can eventually backfire and kind of validate his thing that the system's against him, that the swamp doesn't want him, that the media is all fake news, which some is true and some is complete and total horseshit. Um, I think it's one of those things of, you know, he ran on a populist platform and populism is popular for a reason because it speaks kind of to a lowest common denominator. Oh, they closed down your plants in this city and this terrible and I'm going to bring them back. No, the fuck you're not. Our whole economic system, which is based on sustaining a certain level of growth, just is not sustainable long term. And also long term as a country and as a global economy, not just our own economy, you're going to run into significant issues where automation is going to be such a large part of overall production that you are going to have a natural element of 15 to 20 percent of unemployment because even if you say well the people that used to work in the factories now work on the machines well where you used to have 20 people assemble this vehicle now you have two robots that do it and maybe you have two people overseeing those two robots so yes there is a replacement factor there but it's not comparable and even if you say well there's all types of new jobs that that doesn't wash um so it's speaking to that lowest common denominator of people not really thinking things out uh appealing to them with what they want to hear as opposed to what they need to hear which is the damn truth um appealing to people's lack of education levels and intelligence and ability to decipher information and what kind of passes the smell test there's a lot of different things but again, <coughs> excuse me, I don't see where Hillary Clinton would have been so much better. The bigger question to ask about 2016 than that election should have been not how did Donald Trump win, but how did we get to the point that these two fucksticks were the two major choices that we had to choose from? That's the real question. Nick Anderson, what are your thoughts on Jay Cutler going to Miami? <laughs> On the Schlag Daddy DV channel, I already gave you a reaction video. Go watch that. I promise you'll enjoy. Ben Scott, if you could be a butterfly, what kind would you be? Would you? Who would be your butterfly friend? Hopefully me. Where in the fuck is that from? If that's a song lyric, whatever. If that is a poem or something, I don't know. If that's a love note to me, thank you. I'm flattered, but find another butterfly boyfriend. I'm just saying. Dylan Schwartz, where do Derek Carr and Khalil Mack rank in one-two punches in NFL draft history? They're starting to creep their way up the charts. We are still only three years through their career, so I'm going to reserve final judgment for another few years. But they have the chance um, to be very, very high up on the list, along with the Derek Brooks, Warren Saps, and the Jonathan Ogden, Ray Lewis's, the Dick Buckus, Gale Sayers. I mean, they could. They could especially for the organization they went to, uh, how much impact they've had, the level of their play, absolutely. Even though Mac was a first-round pick and Carr was a second-round pick, they definitely rank up there in terms of one-two combinations if things continue to progress the way they have. Juan Carlos Alcantara, on the old channel you played B-Rad in basketball, will we see a rematch? If we can work out the logistics of him being in Florida, me being in Virginia, and B-Rad wants to get his ass whooped again in basketball, I'll be more than glad to deliver that beatdown. It happened once. Even when I spotted him, what was it, guys, in the Mantath? I spotted him like eight points. If he wants to get beat down again like that, then so be it. I'll do it. Uh, Connor Boyd, what is your current? What is your opinion on the current state of boxing? Um, I still think boxing is a dumb sport. Not, not actual boxing, not the actual fights. But the organization, the governing bodies of boxing are fucking stupid. Um, and that's with them getting some monster super fights in recent years like Pacquiao Mayweather, uh, Mayweather McGregor. You know, the problem is, is Pacquiao Mayweather was about five years too late. And even when you look at um, Mayweather and McGregor, that should be in Dallas at AT&T Stadium or should be in some other venue where you can hold 100,000 people. To sit there and be so heavily vested into the pay-per-view business and still want to do it in 13, 14,000 seat casinos just speaks to the stupidity of boxing. And there's so many other issues. Who's the real, who's the real champ of a weight class? Well, you got 20 of them, so who fucking knows? 
Uh, Howard Berry, who wins in a shoot fight? James Ellsworth or Pee Wee Herman? Pee Wee Herman because he'll take Ellsworth to the playhouse. David Hadley, what sport, if any, did you play in your youth? I was primarily a cross-country and track runner. That probably shouldn't surprise you. Dan Clark, how high was your blood pressure during Game 7 of the World Series, especially in the ninth and 10th innings? Uh, elevated. Significantly elevated. Because there would have been nothing more heartbroken, heartbreaking to me to get all the way to that point in time piss away the three-run lead like they did, and then lose that bitch, potentially lose it even in extra innings after the rain delay. Blood pressure, very, very high. Uh, Thomas Broom Jones, did you lose your virginity to a white girl or a black girl? <laughs> I'm surprised this is even a question. <laughs> How many times have I said I've never had sex with a white woman? Ever. Like, Ever. That means that answers your question right there. Al Yassid Johnson, what female wrestler did you first fantasize about? First female wrestler that I fantasized about. <sighs> Oof. That is a really, really good question. Hmm. Maybe Jacqueline Moore, maybe. Then definitely Trish. Yeah. As a, as a kid and even like a teenager, I really didn't fantasize about the women all that much. Um, so, mm -mm. Uh, Brandon Burstyn, when will Smokey get his just due in the Hall of Fame? Smokey is a Hall of Fame in and of himself. And any Hall of Fame, regardless of what it is, should be honored to have that 30 pounds of big, gray, and sexy Mark Henry pushing cheese burger eating sexy beast motherfucker in it with that said he don't need a hall of fame because he's a legend and everybody fucking knows it steve jacobson was the 90s the best decade for music and television uh maybe the 80s could be throw in there i mean i remember more of the 90s i grew up more in the 90s so i will side with the 90s but the 80s had its things going for it too Brian Yule, how would a Colin Kaepernick type of protest go in MLB or the NBA? Well, we saw it in the NBA a couple of decades ago with Chris Jackson from LSU, or excuse me, at the time he was Mahmoud abdul Rauf. Uh, we saw that, and it didn't go very well for him. It basically got him blacklisted from the league. Uh, you know, it, it's tough because from a league standpoint – you dealing with corporate sponsors, and especially for these major sports, they're getting propaganda money from the military, so they have to be careful not to bite the hand that feeds them too much. So these players kind of put the leagues and the teams in a bad position from a money standpoint. I don't think the protests would go very well in either league. I think it especially would flop terribly in Major League Baseball. It might have some support in the NBA, but I don't think it would be a raging success. Uh, Frank Gale, can we get a one-hour assessment of 2001 WWF? I'll give you a four-word assessment and save everybody a bunch of time. Fuck the invasion angle. Uh, retail news now. What is the worst job you ever had? Worst job I ever had would have been when I worked with Tony at Mud Advertising in Cedar Falls, Iowa. That place was a piece of shit. They treated their people like shit. You make, like, no fucking money there. This is all, this is a job where you're calling car dealerships and try to sell them advertising. And so many of these car dealers are already dropping their pants, giving the hold back and all the dealership incentives going way below on MSRP, doing all of that to try and sell cars, even though they'll brag about how great a salespeople they are. You're not selling shit. If I sit there and took a product that should be able to be sold for $40,000 and sell it at $30,000, that means I'm terrible at my job. I'm just put, moving metal. I suck because I couldn't get anywhere close to the $40,000. I made no money. That's not good sales. So you're dealing with that crap, and then you're going behind people that used to work those territories. It fucking sucked, period. It was by far the worst, most miserable job I ever had, and I think it was a determining factor for wanting to finally pull the trigger and come out here to Virginia. Uh, Nathan Weefer, have you ever been high on any drug? Yes, marijuana. Love the teens and early to mid-20s. That's all I'm saying. All I'm saying. 
It has been years, though. It has been years, and I'm glad it's been years. But y'all want to smoke some smoke some weed? I don't give a shit. This shit should be legal. Uh, just don't expect me to. Matthew Cooper, have you been talking to Tony lately? That's my little secret. Stay tuned. Thanks, you guys, for all your questions. Make sure you check out the Twitter, uh, No Boundaries Q&A, if you haven't done so already. Um, and remember, this is OTR Essential, where it's not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. Remember to go to the Pro Wrestling Tees OTR Essential store and buy a damn shirt. Hashtag buy a shirt.